what is the importance of Crowley's works? Alistair Crowley, 1875 until 1947, was an extremely prolific author, primarily of nonfiction and poetry. To sum up his theory and practice most succinctly, we can quote the motto of his periodical publication, The Equinox, and recall it as, we place no reliance on virgin or pigeon, our method is science, our aim is religion. So, in the vast majorities of his essays, Crowley attempts to apply scientific method to magic. Magic already had, by Crowley's life, a long history as the study of natural sciences that had been, for most of that time, condemned by the Catholic Church under the auspices of the Roman popes. By the 20th century, most of the alchemical craft of metallurgy from the medieval ages had been incorporated into the hard science of chemistry, and likewise the astrological arts of ancient times had largely been supplanted by contemporary astronomy instead. Thus, much of what had once been studied as natural science but that had been called magic had become orthodox, mainstream, accepted, scientific fact. By Crowley's era, Almost all that remained of natural science that was still considered magic was, essentially, telekinesis, a combination of operant observer effect and spooky action at a distance, and psi generally, the nature of the mind. So Crowley set out to salvage the concept of magic by offering scientific proof for the facts of telepathy telekinesis, and ultimately mental-only instantaneous manifestation. Telepathy he dealt with indirectly by considering the 72 demons of the Goetic Shemhamphorash as parts of the brain involved in a form of mind control, either of oneself by oneself, or else of one ostensibly by another. His explanation for telekinesis was even broader, redefining magic to mean any act of the will. Thus, he explained, an individual's willpower motivates them to undertake some task, and this task could be predicted as either destined for success or doomed to fail based entirely on their right or wrong application of magical elements to its accomplishment. As far as mental-only instantaneous manifestation, Crowley described this as a methodology one could learn by practicing creative visualization and using ritual magic techniques meant to dissociate the mind from its immediate surroundings and allow it to focus on matters of a more spiritual nature. Thus, he wrote of how to manifest and make appear the 72 demons of the Goetia, as well as the 30 heirs of Dee's Enochian theurgy, with the circle of the art and triangle of summoning used in traditional practical ritual magic. In short, Crowley experimented in the magical art of causing change to occur in conformity with will by waving a wooden wand around while standing in a magic circle. This is, of course, only a brute oversimplification of it, but nevertheless essentially true. It is also a matter of historical fact that this practice of ritual magic involving spirit summoning using a circle, triangle, wand, and other magical elements dates back to prehistoric times when mankind were still nomadic hunter-gatherers eating raw meat killed with sticks. It is hypothesized by Terence and Dennis McKenna that our species' so-called entrance into behavioral modernity some 160,000 years ago was due to our ancestors ingesting a psychoactive entheogen. 
in either event, it appears to be to around this same time, we can trace the earliest role of tribal shaman as intercessor between the realm of the normal and the natural and the realm of the paranormal and supernatural. Crowley, being a magician in modernity, was carrying on this same tradition in his work while seeking a scientific explanation for it. <laughs> 